everybody what's going on youtube hope everyone's having an excellent day let's get to the videos <laughs> yeah that person's crazy should be no reason why he should be that close to that for people that don't know that is a damn release of water and when it releases water the pressure can be very immense if I'm not mistaken it's over like 120 miles per hour that's enough to rip that could have that would been enough to rip his whole arm off this is either elephantiasis which is a round worm transmitted via a mosquito bite which damages the lymphatics permanently or it could be neurofibromatosis which is a genetic disorder neither one is curable i feel sorry for a person to have to go through that day-to-day -day life that seemed like so much work it's a shame it's not a cure for it hopefully one day will be a cure for it Scientists were able to mimic Nessie Amun's voice by recreating his mouth and vocal cords with a 3D printer. It allowed them to produce a single sound. What's up, baby girl? I could find a video that actually with the mummy voice. I think that's pretty funny, but yeah, I heard they, they were able to 3D print an actual mummy's voice recently, but I can't find a video on it. If you guys can find a video with a real voice, let me know. It happens to these fish's eyes. It's called Maritrauma. If I'm not mistaken, uh, the eyes of that fish look like that because it belongs in the deep part of the ocean. And when the fish rises and go up to the surface, I guess the difference in pressure makes his eyes blow up like that. I'm going right now, fuck shit. Thankfully, everyone was okay. Oh my God. I had a situation like that happen to me when I was a kid. I was on the pendulum, the pirate ship, and it got stuck upside down for like 15 minutes, I think. Maybe longer. I don't really remember I was a kid. That's one of the reasons why I don't even get on uh, carnival rides or like that at all, because a lot of it is just really old equipment and people not doing maintenance like they're supposed to. This is the deep ocean is more interesting to me than space. I don't know why we are so interested in space when we haven't even explored our entire planet yet. The moment a group of divers spotted the world's rarest fish, completely covered in shark bites, usually found in the depths of the ocean. This fellow was found near the surface. Locals believe it only appears just before an impending earthquake. In an extraordinary encounter, divers not only got to witness the harbinger of doom, but we're close enough to touch it. Bill goes with disturbing backstories. Those are some horrible ways to go out, man. Especially the first one. That's why you just stay to yourself. Don't go to no place where they don't see people like that. Close halls that were too close to death. We rebuilt this house on memory. Take my picture on now. Shake it till you see it. And when your fantasies become your legacy and drop. You see the way that bodyguard was looking? He was about to end that guy. Like I was very close to going to the afterlife. So imagine what they got now. 
Imagine what the government has now if it was working on that in the 70s or 60s. Imagine a traditional city and consolidating its footprint, designing to protect and enhance nature. The line will be home to 9 million residents, and we are designing it to provide a healthier, more sustainable quality of life, a place for commerce and communities to thrive like nothing on earth seen before. The line, the city that delivers new wonders for the world. Yeah, no thanks. I remember when they first talking about that. Wasn't that supposed to get built in Dubai, if I'm not mistaken? I mean, just imagine the traffic. I know they'll say it won't be in the cars. We just walk everywhere. But yeah, just imagine the traffic and whatever else crap that could happen there. Gary close calls with death. This close call filmed off the coast of Hawaii shows a spear fisherman about to resurface when this happens. As he resurfaced, a boat ran straight over him, but luckily he was fine and didn't get injured. This could have ended a lot worse, but thankfully it didn't. The man is very lucky to be alive. Hey, would you want to read the Bible or come out to church at all? No. All right, yeah, the Bible. That is the diver fault. I hate to say that. When you dive, you're supposed to have a flag. He didn't have a flag, so that's why the boat didn't see him when he was coming up. Scariest close calls with death. In February 2022, a paraglider was gliding in around 7,000 feet and the video starts out fine. Then out of nowhere, another paraglider collides into her, sending them into a spiral. The other paraglider shouts at her to pull her reserve parachute, but she is unable to because the lines got tangled up. Both paragliders are tangled together and are falling straight to the ground. Neither of them can do anything and they just keep falling. They eventually hit the ground but thankfully survive because the tangled parachutes did manage to break their falls. Have you ever gone paragliding? Follow for more videos. I always wanted to but when I see videos like this it makes me not want to. I don't think I will now. People who disappeared and were found alive. That's all he got for jail time was seven years. That's crazy. He destroyed somebody's life and family life. Kind of had a good ending until that part. This is the Magnolia. This home was one of the largest homes offered through the Sears catalog between 1908 and 1940. Sears Modern Homes offered more than 370 designs in a wide range of architectural styles and sizes. Most included the latest comforts and conveniences available to house buyers, such as central heating, indoor plumbing, telephone, and electricity. Some enthusiasts estimate about 70% of these homes are still standing today. Sears discontinued its modern homes catalog after 1940. Years later, the sales records related to the home sales were destroyed during a corporate house cleaning. Only a small percentage of these homes were documented when built. And finding these properties today required detailed research. So the biggest house would cost around 5100 back then. That was what, like the 1930s. I'm curious what the inflation uh, for that would be. In today's time, the house that went for 5140 will cost $112,000 now. That's crazy. Could you imagine just going on a newspaper and just picking out a house? And if you had land, they came and built it for you. Like, we have a serious house housing crisis right now. Most people my age and younger probably will not be able to own a house. Why you shouldn't explore abandoned places. An urban exploration YouTube channel by the name Urbix Hill went to explore the 13-year-old abandoned Robert Fulton School in Cleveland, Ohio. 
Immediately as he enters the decaying school, he doesn't notice, but what looks like a person can be seen watching from the end of the hallway. But knowing someone could be stalking him, he continues exploring. But it wasn't until Urbex Hill goes up to the third floor, finds a forted down room, that he will come face to face with the stalker. Yeah. Photo. Okay, that's why when you do abandoned homes, you should have you should do three things. So it will have three things. One, you should recon. You should be checking out the place before you will start filming, like days in advance to see if there's any squatters or anyone who was there. Two, arm yourself. Preferably a gun. Worst case scenario, pepper spray. And three, you shouldn't be by yourself. I was imagine you should have at least three people with you if you're doing that. That's crazy, ran to a squad though, but that's what that's more common than you think. With disturbing backstories. Oh, oh, oh. Diver taking a picture of his wife during a dive off. The Australian coast. Dead body of murder victim Tina Watson few minutes before that photo, her husband turned off her air supply and held her underwater until she drowned. He then went up to the surface and told the other divers she was in trouble, and you can see someone else swimming to try and save her. The last known image of pregnant Shannon Watts. Just a few hours later she, as well as her two daughters, aged just three and four would be dead, murdered by her husband Chris Watts. Also, he could start a new life with a woman he was cheating on her with. Father poses with daughter at her graduation. The father, Dennis Rader, also known as the BTK killer, had killed 10 people over the span of about 25 years. I know about the Chris Watts one. It's actually a Netflix documentary about it. It really disturbed me. So if you into true crime, I suggest you check it out, but it probably will disturb you. And the first one, the guy drowned his wife, that's just messed up. And then they'll go up there and say that he didn't do anything. Well, she needed help. What is wrong with people? This guy has one of the deadliest diseases. <laughs> oh, this guy is already dead. He just doesn't know it yet. In the short clip that I played you guys, this man is suffering from rabies. And this was back in the 1950s in Iran. A rabid wolf attacked a large group of villagers. And that man was one of the unlucky people that the rabid wolf bit. Those that don't know, rabies has a 99.99% chance of death, meaning if you have it, you're more than likely going to die. And once you start to show symptoms, you're already dead. Rabies also has five different disease stages. Stage one is incubation. This is right after you get bit. This typically lasts between 14 to 60 days. And at this point, this is the only time that you can do anything to prevent it. Then we have stage two, prodrome, which is when you start to exhibit symptoms. Stage three, where you begin to experience seizures. In this guy's case, they had to bolt him down to the table. And if you somehow survive stage three, then you enter a coma. And then inevitably stage five, death. This disease is absolutely terrifying. And your only chance at survival is if you are bit to immediately go get a vaccine administered. Don't let this happen to you. That's why, yeah, if you ever go out in the woods or any type of wild animal bite you, you need to get checked immediately because of rabies. There's no joke. What is the new earth? Who can stay and who can go? It's not what you think it is. By the way, I hear a lot of people say they are tired. I want to say we are energy. We can't get tired. We are just old souls. Are you an old soul? If people think destroying the earth is a normal thing, then guess what? You're not going to the new earth. There was a time where we can talk to the earth and she will talk back to us. We can talk to the trees. The trees will talk back to us. We lost our connection with nature. This is why Bane's got a reset on his planet. By the way, did you know if you lay down on the grass, you can actually hear the earth heart beating? We are so connected to nature. The people that so-called control this world, they made us focus on the mindset and we forgot about the heart. We can only manifest from the heart because earth is the heart. Everyone won't make it to the new earth. And sometimes you gotta detach from these people with love. Detach with love, the heart. Some people want to know if this is really real. Are we really going to make it to a new earth? 
What does your heart tell you? Remember, energy don't get tired and we are energy. You are just an old soul that is tired of the bullshit. You know, I keep finding videos of people talking about end times. But this one is like a different twist talking about going to the new earth. And energy, you're made out of energy so you can't get tired. Well, that's definitely not true. Just because your energy is very condensed. It's a lot of different ways you can get tired. You, you won't be tired forever, but... Um, this has to be one of the most terrifying medical accidents I've ever seen. So I know you all may be wondering how the heck did this guy's eyes turn out like this? Essentially, this is the product of being electrocuted by over 14,000 volts. It all started when an electrician was working on some wires and an open wire ended up touching his shoulder, sending electrical flows all throughout his body. And electricity is not something to be reckoned with as when it flows, it finds any available pathway. And when over 14,000 volts entered this man's body, it went straight through his optic nerve and into his lens, frying all of it. And this freak accident created one of the rarest zigzag star-shaped cataracts in all of medical history. For reference, this is a chemical cataract burn. And as you can see, the electricity did something completely different to this guy's lens. The man is extremely lucky to be alive as human death can occur from only 42 volts of electricity. The man was able to make a full and healthy recovery and only experienced permanent eye damage. That's why PPE is extremely important. I used to work in electrical work and I actually had an arc blast hit me before. So luckily I had all my PPE on so I didn't get hurt, but the flash was very strong. I just remember my ears hurting for like two weeks, so I couldn't imagine actually getting electrocuted by 14,000 volts. In the 1980s and 1990s, the CIA was working on a top secret remote viewing project called Project Stargate. Maybe you've heard of it. So this is from CIA's Project Stargate. And you can see just in the basic description of remote viewing, it says a talent which is inherent to every human to some degree, meaning it's possible for all of us to learn. Largely ignored in today's societal setting, us believers know that, and through proper training can be developed to a person's individual potential, meaning that not only is it possible for anyone to, to try and learn, but it's possible for anyone to become an expert. This is another one from Project Stargate. This one I thought was relevant because it shows in the top paragraph that this project was funded with millions of dollars between 1986 and 1993. So obviously the government considered it legitimate. This is the last document I have for Project Stargate. And while it's dozens of pages long, I think the summary says enough. Remote viewing has demonstrated that it is a successful collection method, not an experiment. The professional intelligence analysts who assign us projects evaluate us only by the intelligence we produce. Remote viewing should never stand alone, but should be used in conjunction with information from other intelligence sources. Remote viewing is passive and expensive. There is no defense and there is no risk of collection compromise. Remote viewing is definitely real. Like I said on this channel before, when I was younger, about 15 years ago, it was a website I found from the U.S. military that showed pretty much how those declassified documents that it was possible to do remote viewing. I tried it and I had very successful results. The only reason why I stopped was because I don't know why, how I would use that in day-to-day -day life. They would practice by giving you coordinates and then you would use your mind's eye to see what was like what, what, what thoughts or images you got in your mind when you thought about those coordinates and you could either draw it like I did or write it down and then it will show you what it was. So yeah, very interesting stuff. Three forgotten greatest mysteries of history. Number three, on December 8th, 1941, the submarine USS Seawolf is ordered to attack any ship attempting to flee the island of Guam following the Pearl Harbor attack. The submarine spots an unidentified ship, attacks and sinks it. Later, it turns out the ship was the SS Cynthia Olson, an American merchant vessel. All crew members perished. The question remains, how could the USS Seawolf have mistaken the SS Cynthia Olson for an enemy ship? Number two, transport yourself to the ancient city of Nineveh in Mesopotamia, around 700 BC. Archaeologists there uncover a collection of 30,000 clay tablets covered in cuneiform inscriptions, known as the Library of Ashurbanipal. Among these texts is a puzzle, a series of tablets describing what appears to be a detailed description of our solar system. 
including the relative size of the planets and their order, knowledge that by modern standards shouldn't have been possible at that time. Number 1. The painter and amateur archaeologist Flinders Petrie discovers a strange artifact in the ruins of the ancient Egyptian city of Abydos. A series of hieroglyphs that seem to depict helicopters, submarines, and airplanes. Some suggest these hieroglyphs, known as the Abydos hieroglyphs, are evidence of advanced technology in ancient Egypt, while others attribute them to visual coincidences and erosion. Yeah, that looks too much like a coincidence for me. The last hieroglyphic. The first one, maybe that was just a communication problem, and that's the reason why they attacked the merchant ship. The second one is just fascinating, but you'd be surprised what previous civilizations knew. This morning, a close encounter and close call in Yellowstone National Park. Watch as this woman poses for a photo trying to touch a wild bison when it lunges for her as if preparing to charge. That woman rushing away, tripping, as thankfully the bison stays back. It's part of what wildlife experts warn is a dangerous pattern at national parks. But what we see in this footage is just another example where people are losing their fear and more importantly, their respect for powerful animals, including in a place as prestigious and as important as a national park. This video shows another Yellowstone tourist getting dangerously close for a selfie. While this bison doesn't react, Yellowstone officials say there are usually multiple bison attacks each year. These creatures can weigh 2,000 pounds and run 35 miles an hour, easily tossing a human like a rag doll. No. <laughs> Last year, this Texas woman trying to sneak by a bison was gored in the back, spending six days in the hospital. They've got that great mantle of horns, and the last thing you want to do is tangle with those horns. People have been killed by bison when they violate this creature's space. Bottom line, you can and should enjoy the wildlife but from a safe distance using common sense. Get that amazing photo or video but also be careful, you're in their space. This is wild country. I love animals, especially wild ones. And one thing I always do is respect them. You do not need to get close to a bison like that. I've seen bison in real life. They are way bigger than you think they are. The fact that these people are so stupid that they got that close to them is just, it's crazy to me. Like you have to just, your brain, has to be a donut or something like I just don't understand why you would be so oblivious to get close to such a powerful wild animal in this video posted by doorbell news ring video doorbell camera videos on December 7th of 2021 ring doorbell footage catches a creepy man in a hoodie standing outside a woman's apartment in the description was a quote from the victim saying and I quote this is what I've been dealing with since October 31st this man has been outside my apartment almost every night. I have contacted everyone I know to contact about this. What is it going to take for y'all to protect me and serve? The victim shared an update via Twitter stating that she is okay for now after her family confronted the stalker, and security does two checkups every night. Thank God she is okay. In this video posted by Inside Edition on August 10th of 2017, Jerome, who lives with his wife Ashley and their 10-month-old baby, were living a nice normal life until they started noticing unusual noises. They had heard noises in their attic, and if that wasn't scary enough, Jerome noticed a flashlight shining through a pipe. Last month, Jerome was in bed when he heard noises in the attic. I knew that somebody was up there. Then he says he noticed a light shining through a pipe. And I saw the light right through there, like it was searching for a place to look through. Jerome installed a surveillance camera inside his attic and discovered something terrifying. Apparently, Jerome's neighbor has a power drill at hand and it doesn't stop there. Jerome's neighbor made a removable wall to access the attic and drilled holes in their home to see into their bedroom. The suspect, Robert Havila, was arrested for stalking and trespassing. Robert pled not guilty. Unbelievable. Stay tuned for our number one pick that will shock you. Couldn't find the rest of that video, but it's disturbing enough. The first one I thought was pretty disturbing, but the second one, drilling holes into somebody else's house to stalk them. 
man, that's crazy. That person should be put under the jail. He clear or or get mental help. Like he should never leave a ward ever again. My name's Tom Sullivan. I work for Control Demolition Incorporated, CDI, the top rated explosive demolition firm in the world, owned by the Loazzo family during the years surrounding 9-11. And I worked for them as an explosives loader for two and a half years. As an explosives loader, my job was to place explosives in the buildings to prepare them for demolition. I was licensed while in New York by the New York Fire Department to handle explosives. Implode a building straight down just by placing a bunch of explosives around? There are many steps that you need to take. The first off is you have to weaken the building, and that's after a lot of studies have gone into how the building is built in the first place. When we load a building, on a, we have to have all the support columns on a given load floor fail at the same time, within milliseconds of one another. And therefore, the, uh, the, the entire building comes down in a synchronized implosion. So I think this notion of a, of a one, column causing, one column failure causing an entire building to implode in, in a synchronized fashion is just nonsense. Well, the key word here is controlled demolition. And I emphasize the word controlled. We use careful placement of the charges. They're always focused and precise. And we're just not talking about setting off a bomb here. Plus, the amount and type of explosives can pretty well take care of any collateral damage. It says what in reality happens with a controlled demolition is you hear a successive, progressive, smaller waves of smaller explosions going off. And that leads to the successful implosion of the building. In the case of thermite cutting charges, you would have heard far less noise since they are worked by thermal heating, melting of the steel rather than an explosive cutting as in RDX charges. I knew from day one that this was a controlled event. And, and why I did that is because simply looking at Building 7, you have a, a sudden collapse of the building. It's fairly symmetrical as it comes down. There's the classic kink, which means that the center core fails first. And you can see that on the video. And the building falls near free fall. Go back and listen to the tapes of the, of the police officers and people on the ground and the firemen as well. They're reporting exactly what I would expect. You're hearing boom, 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 boom as these different floors start to fail. So again, it, what I'm hearing from what people are there is exactly what I would expected. Regardless of what you believe of that day, it had a real victims. When I saw it on the news when I was in high school, the building he just was a building seven. I thought it looked at really weird the way it collapse. But like I said, at the end of the day, it had real victims. In this short clip, I'm Jasmine was strolling through the beach before a creepy man who was following her crept up behind her and performed a disgusting act. Ellie, six, seven, eight, nine. Just Jasmine laughed it off, but you know she was terrified and creeped out. I see a lot of comments criticizing Jasmine for laughing during these situations, but that's just how certain people react to scary and uncomfortable situations. In this clip by Sushi Potato, this isn't necessarily a stalker, but this man is creepy as hell. What seemed like a nice conversation on stream turned really awkward when someone asked if Sushi Potato and the guy next to her were going to have sex. To no surprise, Sushi Potato felt uncomfortable and tried to walk away before the man grabbed her arm. All right, all right, all right. Over, guys. All right. Just leave me. Bye, mom. I'm all right. I'm not working. What? Wait, what? Are you guys going to have sex there? Right, dog? Right, dog? I, I, I. Are you guys going to have sex after this trip? I'm sorry. I'm so fucking sorry for being rude, but uh, you guys. Okay, we're going. Come on, Jackie. Touch me. Are you going on a prize? Boy, get off me. Boy, get off me. Bitch, just is a bitch. Oh, we're dead. Yo, what? The tiger. No, no, no. So it means. We can. Yo, boy, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. Boy, you you guys have sex tonight. You two have sex tonight. 
There was another situation where Sushi Potato was walking with her friend, searching for a store that sells masks as her mask was broken. She walked by some creepy guys who then asked her to flash them. So you want me to flash her? You want me to flash you? Sorry, I said my mask is off. Okay, I'm trying to go get a mask. No, she's not from Korea. We're gonna go to the Bumeo. I'm not sure why Sushi Potato's friends stopped to talk to those sickos. It's your fault for stopping. Super sister, he's so fucking persistent. At least Sushi Potato got out of both situations as safely as possible. Stay tuned for our number one pick that will shock you. The first one, I think her name was Ah Jasmine. If I'm not mistaken, she stopped streaming because of all those incidents of men harassing her when she used to do IRL streams. I didn't know about the second person, but one thing I do know is that people from Asia, I mean, the men from Asia can be very creepy. I've seen so many Japanese videos of women getting stalked while they were recording. Like I saw a video one time of a lady about to go in her apartment and a lady was recording because she knew somebody was following them. And he would try to run up to her apartment and try to get in. So you usually got to be really careful in general, especially as a woman. You have to be super careful because I hate to say it, some men out here are just very disgusting. On Sunday, December 7th, 1958, around 1 p.m., the Martin family gathered into their 1954 cream and red colored Ford station wagon and headed towards the Columbia River Gorge. Their intention was to collect greenery from the surrounding woodlands to use for Christmas decorations around their home. Three hours later, the family stopped at a gas station in the city of Cascade Locks, 40 miles from their home, where they ate at Paradise Snack Bar in the city of Hood River, 20 miles further from Cascade Locks. So at this point, they were about 60 miles from home. Their waitress at Paradise Snack Bar confirmed that all appeared normal with the family and they left the restaurant around 5 p.m which was already found weird by many, as Ken Martin was known to avoid driving at night due to his eyesight. This was the last time any sightings of the Martin family could be verified. On December 9th, Ken's boss reported him missing, as he had not shown up to work, something that was extremely out of character for him. That same night at around 11 p.m., police arrived at the home of the Martin family. There were no signs of a break-in or foul play. There were dishes still in the sink, and a load of clothing was still in the washing machine and the Santa Claus outfit from a Christmas party was even still laid out on a bed. Wherever the Martins had gone, they clearly intended to come back. Within days, their disappearance was all over the papers, and as many as five different police agencies all launched separate investigations to find the family. Police were able to verify that the family stopped at the gas station and the restaurant, but after that, they were at a loss for where the family could have gone. During the course of the initial search, the police found an abandoned white Chevy near Cascade Locks, which was from Los Angeles and had been reported stolen by its owner. This led police to search for two ex-convicts, Roy Light and Lester Price. There was some suspicion that the two may have been involved in the disappearance of the Martins, as the owner of the Paradise Snack Bar told the police that they were at the restaurant at the same time as the Martin family, leaving shortly after the Martins. But without substantial proof to connect them to the disappearance, they were never questioned. Strangely, Days after their disappearance, police would continue to get calls reporting sightings of the Martins from all over the area. Several alleged witnesses claimed to see the Martins or people matching their description in other parts of Oregon, Iowa, and even Montana. None of these sightings could be verified. Two witnesses claimed to see the Martins station wagon around dusk parked under the Bridge of the Gods in Cascade Locks with two men standing next to the vehicle and speaking to the passengers inside. Though well, this couldn't be verified, but if it was true, this was the last known time they were seen alive. Many came to believe that they had accidentally driven into the Columbia River, 